Um, so it being five past 11, um, it's time to introduce our next speaker, uh, Gillian Wood, who is the Director of Information and Records Management at Transport for New South Wales, um, here to present about the journey to implementing Microsoft 365. Uh, so Gillian is currently uh, a Director at Transport for New South Wales, um, a highly experienced public servant um, with, a, with a wealth and an extensive background in IT. Uh, where she's focused on the use of digital content and innovation in technology wherever she goes um, in supporting new work practices. Um, she's very passionate about encouraging more women to work in higher levels in IT. Uh, it comes soon enough, in my opinion. Um, so, so welcome, Gillian. Thank you very much, Andrew. And thank you for putting up the slides. Actually, I'm going to apologise and say, may I share my own slides? Because I've made a few changes um, along the way this morning. And firstly, I'd like to start by um, acknowledging the original owners of the land that we're meeting on. Um, I'm speaking to you today from the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. Well, that's a hard act and discussion to follow, and I hope that what I'm about to say doesn't feed any controversy. I'll start with a little bit about me. I'm an information manager, not a records manager. So please don't ask me about file plans, disposal schedules, or local business rules. That's not my um, area. But I do know the importance of good ontology and preserving information for the future. And my job is to make sure we have strategy and funding to take us into the future. So just to give you a bit of background, my career, my focus has actually been really on making information work for you as a client or a customer, helping people to find it, manage it, store it, and now ultimately make sure it's preserved. I'm an accidental career public servant in this space, and I've worked managing libraries and also client services in IT in New South Wales Health, and then more broadly across information management in both the Department of Customer Service and now in transport. And I tell you this because I think this mix of backgrounds and experiences is a really good basis for where we're at now. And it's very different to the discussion we've just had. Um, but I describe my skills as translating geek to English and English to geek. I'm a bit of a frustrated engineer. I think in databases. And that really helps me look at information systems and how they're structured, which is helping with the whole digital information um, challenge that we've got and partnering with IT for innovation. So I realise it's a while since we've all met. So a little bit about transport and where we're up to. Um, it's an amalgamation of the former entities covering road, rail, bus, ferry and metro transportation. Many of you will know it from in the former parts of the RTA, Sydney Trains, STA, etc. But what you may not know is that since 2012, the cluster has gone through massive changes and it's really changed a focus from modes of transport to citizen journeys. And they're really looking at connected communities. All the conversations at the strategic level are about connecting communities. As part of that, many of the old brands have disappeared and new divisions have been created. There's been a lot of disruption across the entire business. And remember that this all sits on a very long legacy. And that's really important to think about if you're talking about records. And just to put it in context, we're not a small um, cluster. We've, there are about 35,000 of us. So there's now one lead corporate services entity across the organisation, which includes IT for transport. And that in itself has 1700 staff. And last year we went through our own restructure. The core records function for transport moved from the shared services entity into this IT group at the end of 2019, which was about the time I joined in, the, in a new role as director. The intention was to provide a strategic focus to the management of information across transport, bringing together disparate uh, systems and practices. Before I joined transport, I did joke that they had one of every system and two of most. Unfortunately, I discovered I wasn't actually wrong. Look, we have some very large, well-established EDRM systems. Objective, which will have which has about, oh, well, over 100 terabytes of data in two separate instances. 
Um, we've got a few instances from the Trim family with the largest in use at Sydney trains. We've got two instances of open text, the most notable in Sydney Metro. And then there are sundry other systems like Document and RecFind, and I'm sure there'll be others that I don't know about. So what I can say is that we are already capturing a lot of information and there's a very well developed records management practice across the organisation. And there are separate teams in Metro and Sydney trains. Um, and I'm, today I'm not even talking about our paper, our warehouse of paper records, um, nor those in off-site storage, except to note that it's a significant amount that keeps us very busy as well. So what's the problem? One of the things we've started doing across a lot of transport is going back to first principles and saying, what is the problem we're trying to solve? And in terms of our record keeping and where I certainly came in, is that despite our best efforts, the amount of information that we have in the department is constantly expanding, particularly in the digital space. Putting it briefly, the problem is now that we have too much information stored in too many places, in too many formats. It's too much for us to handle in our old ways of working. And we've long since moved past our ability to classify or sentence records manually. And the other problem we've got is that the next step isn't clear. No one's come in and said, this is the one record system that's going to rule them all and so solve all our problems in the digital sense. Um, I'm sure everyone's seeing an increase in data from the Internet of Things, um, things like CCTV and other automated systems. And so suddenly we've got this huge pile of data that's being deployed in more and innovative ways. The reality is that people won't have to, all their information to record systems, however much we work with them. And we can't classify them all. And if you ask just about anybody, shared drives really aren't working. Um, we knew this 10 years ago, people can't find things, they store multiple versions of documents, and we know that one suggestion is up to 60% of our shared drives hold duplicate, redundant, obsolete or trivial information. And then along comes the best team adoptions mechanism of all time, COVID and the need to work from home. In transport, we went from fewer than 1,000 people working remotely to 15,000 in the space of a week or so. Maybe a bit of hyperbole, but not much. With all of this, there's the imperative to be able to discover the information, and suddenly we aren't the only ones talking about actually managing and finding the content. And then finally, there's the capacity of our teams. We know that many records teams are shrinking and not growing, and not only do we not have the capacity to simply handle the volume of information, we don't have any spare capacity to stop and think about how to do things differently. So I'm lucky that I re that this role is looking after information and records, because the, the vision is that by helping people manage their information better, it makes it easier for us as records professionals to identify and then preserve the important records that they have. So the road to records in 365. Um, again, going back to first principles, um, we know that the, the practices of today are built on the rules and technology of the past and that they're remarkably simple about wherever you can go. So I always step back and say, well, how do we do things in paper? Because often that gives you the answer of why things developed the way that they did. Um, remember when people used to send things to the registry and somebody would just magically sort them out for them? And then we put in an index called an EDM, and this is way precedes me being involved, but I remember sending things to registries and thinking, wow, somebody's looking after it for me. And then people realise that the stuff you're putting into the computer is actually useful for getting it out of the computer. And then people, then we just looked at that system because it was the most useful system that we had. Often it was the only one that went across the whole department. And so it became a collaboration system or it became the workflow system. But then everything overtook us. Um, we started having um, 
information stored in other systems. So along came the customer relationship um, options. So there's a lot of stuff in there and then all your HR stuff gets stored in another system. And then you realize that actually it isn't all in our electronic record system and we don't know where it is and we don't know where, how to manage it. And so I almost wasn't going to include this slide, but again, still on my first principles thing, what are we trying to do? Um, when we talk about um, <laughs> managing records outside a bespoke system, it's in, I find it's really important to remember what we're trying to do. And in our organisation, I talk about the three Ps. Our cyber team does protection. We have another team looking after privacy and we do preservation. That's ultimately our job and it's the one that no one else does. We do a lot of other things as well, but it's the preservation that we need to come back to. And that's where the archiving and the capturing and all of that that we've just talked about is so important. So a bit more about transport. Um, we are doing a project that said that looked at how much information we've got and estimated we've got about 2 billion information items. And I think that that's an underestimate. Um, we know we're capturing a good amount already, um, but we know there's a lot that we're not capturing. We, we also know that we're not capturing things in vital systems that are used to develop to deliver other systems across the organisation. Um, large project document control systems, CRM databases and other specific systems for operating things like trains or um, whatever. We've also got systems that are so old, for example, the drive system, which is now up to version 20 plus. So they're old and they're harder to integrate. So all of this together, you're saying, we're, 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 what are we talking about? Records 365, yeah, we're getting there. I really wanted to take us back to say, what are we trying to do? So when I'm talking about this, I really try and um, work out what we've got. The breadth and scope of information in transport is really beyond any of our traditional techniques. We can't identify every piece of software we've got. We've got multiple asset registers. And the crown jewels is a really fun thing to look at for under the cyber. So I've really taken, and thank you, Stephen, for speaking up earlier. I got this from Stephen Bedford many years ago. And I really talk about what goes where. What information have you got? Where should it be stored? For how long? With what permissions? And when is it allowed to be destroyed? That he's making sure it's fully sentenced. And then the third part is how are we going to get it there? And when you start applying a simple phrase like that across the information that we have, you start to see that we have a lot of work to do. I'm sorry, was there a comment? No? OK, I'll continue. Um, we've got a lot of work to do. We've got to create the where for the different requirements of records. We need to store video. We need to store 3D models. We've got very large um, files. We've got um, aerial photographs. We need cold storage for things that need to be kept but aren't accessed very often. Um, and then we need to link to the many um, systems that actually run the business of transport for New South Wales. <laughs> so what can we do? We've got a couple of options and the um, We've got a couple of options. And these are not probably not new to all of you. We can try and work with existing systems and resources. We can integrate new data with the EDM systems, um, adding connectors to existing systems so that data drops into, for example, your objective or your CM system. Um, and if you're lucky, you may be in a greenfield site. It may be possible. Um, if there are changes in your department and you're able to start from scratch. Um, so the new records authority can have its own greenfield record system. That's exciting. Um, or you can do something and look at a completely new paradigm and work with the landscape you've got and craft what you can. So this is what we did. 
Um, and this is what we're doing. And what you'll see here is I'm not telling you how we're doing it. We're telling you it's a, actually a much bigger piece of work than just saying, here's a new piece of software and this is what we're using. It's a mesh of elements, creating an overall program which will provide accountability for transport and the government and also make the information as available as possible to staff and capture as much as pos possible. Um, it's got so many different elements that need to come together to make the goal of capture and preservation a reality. But our ultimate goal is, is to, I'm sorry, I think somebody may have their microphone open. You may want to just mute yourself. Um, so here's what we've done. We've consolidated, modernised and stabilising our um, EDRMS systems. Um, we've got a lot of data in them and a lot of updating to do. There is just no single system that meets our need at the moment. Another really key thing that we did was we developed and shrank our business classification scheme. I'll come to this a bit later, but that's been a key thing that we've done. We've got a number of other programmes on the way so that we can um, really work on this together. So we're developing an archiving holding space, somewhere that we can take any type of data or information, if you like, into custody and hold it until we can work on it properly. Um, we, need them, we need to hold it rather than letting it simply meet the delete key. Um, but it's sort of like people, I talk about it like people dra driving a truck up to our warehouse and unloading the pallets of information. We need the digital equivalent. But we also need an electronic archive system for things that we don't need to keep in expensive storage, things that we just need to make sure they're protected for the next 20 or 30 years that aren't yet ready to go to state archives, but we just need to keep. But they don't need to be in the expensive tier of storage. One other big thing that we're doing is investing in very good enterprise search. This is crucial because with a distributed records um, system, you need to be able to find the stuff. And that's got a lot of security and complexity challenges, and we're still working through those. Um, it, it's going to be a real focus in coming years. The find, use, manage, is find is going to be really big. Um, because people, they don't want to search, they want to find, and they want it easy, and they've been spoiled by Google, so how do we make that easier for them? One of the other things is to um, identify significant non-compliance systems. So for us, one of the really big ones is a thing called TeamBinder from Innate. It's where they hold the documents and they control documents for a lot of the really big um, construction proge projects. You know, transport's doing things like the West Connects and the uh, Metro and all of those sort of things. The communication is in these really big systems and we have to make sure that we're protecting the records that are stored by our contractors. There are lots of them and they don't integrate easily. So that's a big piece for us. A last piece that I'll mention here is software as a service, where data is collected and maintained in the cloud. And ideally we'd be on board from the start, but how many of us have had people saying, oh, um, so-and-so has left and all the data was in X shadow um, shadow IT system, and we need to save it somewhere. Um, I mean, everything from SurveyMonkey through to complex HR systems. So what are we actually doing for ourselves? We Let me tell you what we're doing, but that you can get that it's been a long journey because of a lot of background, a lot of thought, and a lot of complexity. It really hasn't been just pick one off the shelf and put it in. So we're adding a record point. We we're using the software from Record Point and we're adding a records engine and connecting it to data stores. So your record system is no longer a whole system. We're going for an engine that connects to data stores. Um, we're starting with Teams and SharePoint via API linkages. And how we're doing that is people get to opt in and um, we ingest the information and then things are classified using rules that are high level. And then as we teach the machine, they're auto classified. So yes, this does mean that at the moment, our teams are manually checking each auto classification, which is not much fun, 
but at least we know there's something behind each click and the machine is learning and will eventually um, eventually learn and say, is this what you meant by project? Oh yes, that's correct. Well then major project, oh that's fine. I'll file it over here with this um, BCS term which has uh, associated disposal class. One thing we had to do is capture more metadata that's in, than is in SharePoint. If you've ever looked at the amount of metadata in SharePoint, there's an awful lot of it. There are two or three pieces it doesn't capture, which is really frustrating. Um, so we've had to do what we're calling metadata enhancement, where we are asking people who create a team to provide a little bit more information, and that's the option for them to say, um, we contact them and say, you've got a new team, do you want it to be protected as or preserved as records? We're very fortunate that our um, M365 um, governance is already making people assess their teams and review them every six months. And so this just dovetails with that process. And I think it, what it's saying is to do really good governance of teams, whether, whether or not you're using them as records um, stores as we are, you do need to do a bit more than it's just straight out of the box. Again, that will all build up the machine learning. Absolute key thing is the BCS. Um, this has been a huge effort to um, compress it down, and especially for an organisation as big as ours. But the more we can align to standard BCS and disposal class, the easier it is for us, the easier it is for machines. So that's been a big focus, haven't finished it yet, and a huge thanks to our governance team who are going through it and wading through it. Um, it's, it's a big piece of work. Um, but once we've got it, I think there's a lot more with creativity, a lot more creativity we can do with having some standard um, taxonomy there across the department because we know that other parts of the department are um, crying out and eventually we're hoping to get to standard metadata um, set, but that's a bit of the way down the path. We're using it as an opt-in at this stage so that we don't get the same problem that we have with shared drunks with a lot of um, junk or um, NAP information, but um, eventually we'll hopefully be able to just run it on every part of SharePoint. Um, but at the moment it's opt-in. Again, very easy to ingest the data. It's more that people have to think about what am I putting in there. Um, one of the key things that we have to do that everybody has to do really is um, train people about using teams helping them so what we're doing is going out and helping them structure their teams if they say help oh, how do i arrange things great well can we make a few suggestions of what you may want to call your channels which turns into what you call your files which is aligned to our bcs and therefore is the metadata that we want to capture win-win um, but we're also teaching them about things like versions so using the inherent versions, although we've also got an additional feature that we've built ourselves of major versions. So if you want to keep this and say, well, this is really version one and I'm sending it off here and then version two is another one. So we're trying to build in what people are wanting to do in 365 as well and make it easier. And the last thing to say about this is we're experimenting and we're learning. Um, we've had some really interesting discussions over the last 12 months, and I think we're going to spend the next 12 months having some more interesting discussions. And it's a whole new concept for not only us, but all of our um, clients to grasp as well. We're constantly coming up with questions of how do we, or what should we do, or what do you think about? And so we all sort of chew it over and say, well, this is what we suggest we do. And if that doesn't work, we'll do something different. There's no playbook for this. Um, fortunately, we're up for the challenge, but we've got so much work to do as we do it. Um, so what does this mean in practice? So I'll give you an example. Um, one of our entities, um, State Transit Authority, Sydney, Sydney Buses, actually um, it ends existence this weekend. It's no longer there. It's one of the brands that's being retired. Um, they shared drives. They had a lot of stuff that was in their record system, Ray, we we're importing that, importing it into SharePoint, um, and 
So with their shared draft material, they're arranging what they think we need to keep into new structure under our BCS that will come into SharePoint. We don't have to import it into Objective. And um, so one of the things that when we eventually move people from their shared drives, they could do that and say, well, anything that I leave behind is NAP. So we really don't need those photos from the Christmas party or from the, um, the cake drive or everything else. Um, we can do that with, and we can even get our connector to connect to file shares. And then um, I know that there are things like um, rot bots or um, things that can go through and identify what's duplicates and automatically eliminate them if we have the authority to do so. So again, when you're talking about the size of information we've got, it actually is definitely worth it for us. Transport's like that. Everything is just big. It's scary. I've been here two years and it's still big. Um, likewise, all those hard drives of data that people find in their bottom drawers, instead of having to import them into a system, we can assess and quickly move to folders, or even better, tell them how to move to folders, and then we can just link to the product where it's stored. So it takes away one step. It, again, it does mean that we have distributed records. It's not perfect, but that's that's what we're doing. So what we're calling this is we're doing records differently. Um, we're really managing records in place or in the system that they're created. Uh, we need to have a view of doing records differently. We're going to encounter many systems and many petabytes of data across transport. So we have a focus on making information easy to find, use, manage and preserve. Whatever it is and whatever that entails. We keep going back to this formula. How do you find it? How do you use it? How do we manage it and make sure that it's available for the right people at the right place at the right time? And then how do we preserve it? Um, it helps us to deal with the variety and scope of our work and then methodically work through each, each challenge individually. One of the things that I always bring up just to highlight here is that we're fully part of the IT function. And I know that will send shivers up the spine of many people, but it does work for us. We are a respected and valued part of the IT function, including the strategic future, because they know that content needs to be managed. Our IT people are not stupid. They know that they are putting in systems and there's content and something has to happen to it. And so they're really glad that part of IT is a team that will tell them how to manage the content. We are trusted partners and we're getting ourselves involved earlier and earlier into the um, architecture piece to say what information are you going to be generating and storing and where should it be stored and how are we going to do that? What's the preservation time and what does that look like? So that's, we are calling that information management by design. Um, and we really are working on being part of that. Um, we're talking about being digital on the inside. That's a good one for our, our, a good line from our government and I really like it. There are a lot of analog processes still in transport and we're keen to be involved in moving them digitally, not just digitization, but actually completely reworking them so that they're digital from the start to the end. Again, often people talk to us about, oh, we want to make a form or something like that. And it's, well, what are you trying to collect? Where's the information going? Is there a better way of doing it? Um, in transport, we have three guiding principles. We have customer at the center, people at the heart, and there's a real focus on what we're doing being for the greater good. And this has helped us shape what we're doing in information and records management as well. We put clients at the centre of what we do. We've got a partnership team who reach out to our client and our goal is to understand what our clients need to do with their information so that when we're talking to them, we're not just giving them a cookie cutter solution, but we're saying here's the solution that will work in your business area. Remember, we've got everybody from trains to ferries and everybody in between. Um, we are also putting our people at the heart, the records and information management team. Um, it's such a great team. And I remember very early on, one of the team lamenting there was no real respect 
for records and the work we do. And one of the great things has been seeing how much the work we do is now valued and respected. And certainly there's a lot more respect out there for an understanding of the importance of what we do. And we do it for the greater good. Um, it's the right place and time and funding for us to be doing able to try this. So we'll let you know how it goes and we're really happy to share what we learn. So in all of this, I want to acknowledge it's taken a long time and a lot of people to get to this point. Um, there have been two really courageous I, IM teams that I've been involved with in DCS and also transport who've explored and experimented in this space. Um, and I want to thank everybody who's thrown around ideas, stood around whiteboards, brainstormed on how we should, how and if we could get this to work. Um, I represent and stand on the shoulders of all those giants, and I look forward to others standing on the shoulders that we're doing today. So we're really looking at this as an experiment. It may not work. I think it will, and we prefer to try than die wondering. So. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much, Gillian. So um, oh. I think I've got a okay. there, there. from Gillian herself. Um, I'll just mute you for the moment. Um, no, that was really that was really good and, and exciting to see. Um, you know, people sort of, you know, trying new things and um, and certainly in an environment that um, you know clearly has some some endorsement and some executive support. Um, there are a few questions in the chat section. Um, so, so some of them are you know, asking about whether you could share your details for your metadata set uh, for SharePoint. Um, probably too big for the chat here, so we might take that one offline because um, there's a few more here around um, about getting a bit more information. So there's one here that says, I'd like to see more uh, on your team governance and end user support model. Uh, perhaps we could organize another forum uh, to explore this. Um, there's a, you know, I'll, I'll just go through them because I think that I think the theme here is that there's probably some people after some more detail. Um, <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, um, so, so, so I don't know if you want to talk about them now or. I'm, I'm going to let you summarize because I think if I just try and scan this grant. So let me tell you, we, we restructured our team so that we have um, a team that looks after our paper records, and that's really important. We've got so many of them, and our warehouse, we've we've managed to clear one of our warehouses, and we're so excited. Um, we've got our systems team who look after the various um, uh, record systems that we've got, and we're just about to finish um, doing a consolidation of one of our object of our objective, which is so good. Um, we've created a new partnerships team, which is making sure that we're, that's, that's what I was talking about, about um, engaging with our clients. One of the roles there is we've created creating a community of practice um, of information champions across the organisation. They were already there, so we're not, we were able to build it up during our rollout of information labelling as well. We got quite a few people involved in that. And so we're trying to build on that so that people are, um, really able to take the information away and have good discussions in their work group, their branch, their division, whatever size it is, and then we can respond to that. And then we've got a really great service delivery team who are the ones who go out and say, right, what do you need? How can we help you? Now, we're all learning all these roles. That was new. It was most of, we had a, anybody who's been looking at the job ads would know we spent the last quarter last year recruiting. We've got some great people. And so we're just really falling into those roles now. So it's all fairly new. Ask me back in a year and I'll tell you how it's gone. Yeah, uh, so if I, so thanks for that. If I, you know, I just have to scroll up because there's a few people uh, here gushing about how much they enjoy being at transport or are soon to join transport and are excited. Um, I guess for any of those people who you do want to reach out we'll we'll probably share something uh, after this but uh, if you want to speak to Gillian directly uh, because you're soon to be part of the cluster if you have trouble reaching her um, I'm sure we can put you in touch um, yeah no problem and if I'm not here I'll, I'll put you in touch with the best person in my team to answer specific questions because if you're asking about the BCS it's not me there are some wonderful people who are doing that 
yes, there are some people <laughs> asking about the consolidated BCS because uh, it looks like they're updating their own. Um, scrolling down. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, is there, so, is there anybody who wants to read out their question or? Have a I'm really glad to start conversations because this whole work has been about having conversations and having ideas and working together. So really interested in keeping talking about it. Jo okay, Melville has got her hand up. Yeah, look, just a general question. Um, I just put it in the chat. This is the first time I've joined anything like this, but I think it would be really useful to have regular forums with everybody like this together, just to sort of get that, I don't know, get a platform, learn things, get some standardisation across all government departments. <laughs> that would be good. Um, not re reinventing the wheel, sharing our ideas. Um, yeah, I just wondered if there were plans um, to do this yeah. regularly. I'd, I'd like to second that. I think we all spend a lot of effort um, try, trying to do exactly what, what we're talking about here. And so I think it's important for all of us to get together and to share ideas and concepts. And so, so we don't waste time, you know, going through the same stuff. Yeah. Yes, uh, let's let's take that. I think that there, there's probably a number of um, probably a number of other forums, but if we if we want something specific on this, um, and just because I've had the pleasure of seeing some of the work that Gillian's done firsthand, um, you know, there, there's a lot of you know there, there's a lot of stuff to to leverage there um, in terms of their experience going through it, and there's no need for everyone else to make similar uh, similar mistakes. You know, we can learn from that. Um, and I want to learn from all so, of you because we're about to do a trim upgrade. So I want to learn from all of you as well. Yeah. Um, so, so Gillian, I'm not sure there's a, there's a question here from, uh, sorry, Daniel, your name's cut off in the, um, in the thing. So it's Daniel, Daniel, someone, no, even making the window bigger didn't help. Um, it's from Daniel uh, about the, the missing metadata in SharePoint. Um, it is addressed to Gillian, um, so could New South Wales government not leverage its purchasing power with enterprise MS licenses to influence system adoptions of those fields? I can let Gillian answer that one. Yeah, doing our best. So we're very fortunate again that I'm able to work with the person who's leading the 365 purchasing in transport. And if we can, we will. It's um, one or two fields that we haven't yet managed to change, but we can tell you what we're doing. And anything that we can do at a whole of government level, believe me, we will do. We'll, we'll carry it. We'll, and, and we also are talking to the CIOs forum, which is the IDLG. Um, our CIO is keen. So I have got two levels of CIO above me. They're both very keen to do it and very keen for this to have greater exposure as well. And so if we need um, sponsorship, we've got that as well. Perfect. Um, and then another question from Daniel, which I think is um, quite poignant. Uh, do you have any tips on convincing senior stakeholders who consider information governance as peripheral or secondary to other strategic goals? Align it to risk. Our secretary got very jumpy. You, it's no secret that transport has had a number of leaks over this year. Um, that gets the secretary's attention. So that got him very jumpy and we were already doing good information labeling, but if we weren't, we would be doing it now. So align it to the risk of not being able to find information in three, five, 10 years time. That's my best recommendation. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, a good. A good perspective to have. Um, and I think I think generally goes towards the, you know, while I think you touched on it before, Gillian, about that alignment of the function with IT, um, but because because the impacts are, you know, to to the organisation and to the business very broadly. But I think regardless of where it sits, um, those risks remain the same. Yeah, it's really um, hard then, to argue, argue the State Records Act. People will choose if they've got various options. They'll choose. Well, I can wear that. Whereas if you argue risk of losing information, it's harder to um, to ignore. Yeah. Um, and then there's a there's a question here about um, whether you've worked with in place records management outside of Microsoft Suite 365 in systems such as SAP, and if you've got any insight on how well that's worked. 
Okay, well, our SAP um, is a really nasty, hairy beast, which I think Andrew knows something about. Um, we've got, they installed open text as the um, archiving system behind it. So we haven't had to work with it, although we're about to go in and do a bit of a deep dive. If you want to talk to me about systems outside 365, come and tell me how you're managing to protect everything in Salesforce, because I really want to hear who's doing it and who's doing it well, because we're not yet. Um, and how about here we go the, the ever present question uh, what about what about change resistance from staff any any hints on winning hearts so that's the beauty of doing re records management in a system that people are already using so getting people to use teams was a no-brainer once they got into um, three uh, into work from home they didn't have much choice Getting people to use the functions well is a thing of training and adoption. But again, we're really focusing on benefit. So if you do this and you do it, if we'll make, I, I generally say come to a half hour session and I'll save you that half hour every week from here onwards, simply by not having to send attachments around the organisation, by using a single document, by not having multiple versions. Things like that, if you're not already doing that, really easy and really quick wins. So that's in terms of saving we, our clients. We, we call them customers of people outside transport, clients of people inside transport. In terms of our own team, um, they're, they're, we've, we've had to work on that. Sorry, in terms of we went through a restructure. Everybody got thrown up in the air and it all landed where it did. Um, that was a really hard time for us and for all of us to go through. I think that this has been, it is a significant change, but I think we're doing it very proactively. And I think there's been good engagement. And uh, what really has excited me is the people in the team who said, who've, whose eyes have lit up and said, oh, I can see opportunity here. And who are asking about how can we make this better? So I think people are coming along with it, but I have to say we still have a significant objective instance, we still have significant paper records. So we've got the whole gamut in our um, records team as well. Uh, so we've got a few few comments, uh, one from Stephen Bedford about we all know how hard Salesforce is, um, and, and one from Wendy Bryan uh, saying that she believes that record, uh, record there must be record point, record R365 um, are close to having a Salesforce connector. So, then yeah, I'm, I'm, waiting for, I'm waiting for her to develop it. <laughs> okay, well, um, and uh, given, given okay. the presentation we've got coming up next, yeah. nearly, uh, nearly you there, can just nearly. let me know as well. Oh, nearly there. thank you, Wendy. Collaborate. <laughs> so this is actually one of the good things about moving around departments. Wendy Bright used to be my boss and was the one who really advocated for us to start this journey in transport along with our CIO, Richard Host. Um, who's been a great supporter of records throughout his public service career. So Wendy's now at the Department of Premier and Cabinet, and so it's really good because there's now a cohort of us sharing ideas and working together and really trying not to reinvent the wheel. Uh, that's right. Um, just looking at the time, we have we have one minute to go before our next presentation. Um, and there's a few questions in there which we might take and respond to afterwards. Um, Absolutely. Certainly the one that's, uh, there's, there's one that's pointed back at Sarah there from um, Shane Campbell, which um, is a valid and important question, but we don't have time for right now. Um, so I'd like to thank Gillian for all the time for the presentation and the questions. Uh, it's excellent. Um, and I think that's just the start of uh, some broader conversations.